Hi, thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. My name is Scott Moyes. I'm a manufacturing and cam technical specialist working for Capro Systems based in New Zealand. We support Autodesk Cam users in both Australia and New Zealand. I'm going to go through and show a general workflow for machining this gear um, using five axis strategies inside HSM Works and also some machine simulation at the end on a um, Haas VF3, I believe. So I've already set up the job. Um, I actually imported this this gear from um, from GrabCAD. It looks like uh, legitimate gear geometry, so I was quite happy with it. It's a fairly decent size. So to start with, um, I've created wanted to create a job. Uh, I'm going to use some cylindrical stock. So I'm I'm just doing milling. I'm not doing turning. My stock is cylindrical, and I can choose the axis. So I want it to be around that. The axis of that conical face there and the excess stock I've got on there is perfectly fine and I also set up a SOLIDWORKS user coordinate system to make sure that the Z was pointing in the right direction so I've specified that there I've got a machine set up and so today I'm going to be using a yeah the VR3 a VF3 with the TR210 um, 5 axis trunnion and that's it so I do want to, I'm just going to hide this um, particular one here and I'll show you the spun profile tool. So typically it's used for turning but here it's really handy as well. Ask me for an axis, which model do I want to spin and I can set that's fine, the accuracy and it's just going to take the, uh, create a sketch and generate a surface for me which is perfect. So I can use that to then um, generate some toolpaths but also contain toolpaths as well. So this is my default job and I've set up some adaptive clearing. So this is kind of, this is what I'm going to replicate here. So 3D adaptive I'll use my 10mm bullnose tool and I do want to um, contain my machinery, my toolpaths using my silhouette and tool outside boundary is fine. Um, rest machining from job stock that's perfect and I'm happy with all these defaults here I could turn on flat area detection to find the bottom here but I'm I'm okay with the way it is and set some minimum retraction here so I, I'm quite confident that in 3 axis mode I'm gonna be safe doing minimum retraction and while that's generating I can then start toolpathing the next section so I want to adaptive clear away the material from just one of these two teeth here so I'm going to use a smaller tool this time I'll go with my 4 mil bullet nose and my machining boundary I need to contain using edge selections I'm going to turn off tangent propagation because some of the edges I'm selecting go across hard vertexes and just start picking up these edges now as is often the case there can be slight with models there can be slight imperfections that you have to be aware of when you're selecting edges so I knew there was a small edge there because I've had to inspect this model already and just go around and complete the contour selection So now I've got a completely closed profile. I also need to set the tool orientation to make sure that the profile is projected in the correct orientation and also that the tool paths approach the stop from the right angle. So this is a positional um, roughing operation here in five axis. So now we've got that outline set up. I'm happy with all those values and we can set minimum retraction on this again and the stay down, set the stay down level at 50%. So that does a back to back comparison to figure out whether it's quicker to stay in the job or retract with a weighting of 50%. So again, while that's generating I can carry on um, operating. Th this next operation I have used a smaller tool again so I can just copy and paste that now so I don't have to redo it 
which is also a handy way of reusing toolpaths from other parts. So I'll generate that. That's going to wait because rest. Actually, I need to come back in here and edit this because I didn't turn on rest machining. So I need to switch rest machining over to from previous operations. So it's going to look at adaptive 4 and see what materials left over from that one there and then generate the toolpath to suit. So now I'm going to have to regenerate this one here and this is also a rest up machining operation so it's going to wait until adaptive 5 is finished generating before it's going to generate its toolpaths. So from there I can now do the spiral toolpath. I want to make sure that I can see my spun profile here so I'm going to use that now and one of the things you can do here is when I initially programmed this I looked at using the 5 axis flow strategy to surface this face here but I really don't need to um, do a 5 axis operation there I can actually surface that all of these teeth in one hit with um, in 3 axis so using the spiral strategy So yeah, here I will. I'll go back to my 10 mil bullet nose tool, and it's asking me for the center of the spiral. So I can select any radial edge, machining boundary silhouette. So that's perfect. Tool center, that's fine as well. I don't need to set up any tool orientation here because I'm just going to machine it in three-axis mode. But I do want to override the model. I want it to ignore the gear underneath and only use the spun profile model. Then I can set up some. Let's go with 0.5, and I want to start on the outside and work my way in. Let's see what that gives us. Ideal. So we can see by the red marker here that the tool is entering the stock on the outside and it's just spiraling its way all the way down into the bottom of that hole. And so we've just machined the top face of all those teeth in one hit. So now we're going to get into doing some some flow. Okay. Now one of the ways of controlling the um, five axis toolpaths is to set set an initial or orientation, and then you've got to adjust the tilt of the tool to roll over so that it clears the model and best suited for each face. So realistically, um, it, you get more control if you program one face at a time rather than lots of faces in one go. So using the flow strategy I'll come in and select my um, small tool. So we'll go with a 2mm ball here. Um, I don't want to have an override on my model so it's remembered that setting from last time. But I do want to set a tool orientation and I want to orient the Z axis to be normal to that plane there, which is roughly um, tangent to the top of the this curved surface of the tooth here. And you can see that now the Z axis is normal to that, that plane. So which face do I want to um, toolpath? That one there, make sure that the direction is correct. And how many step overs do I want to do? I want to do 20. We're going to use multi-axis. And I know from doing this previously that I need to have a an angle of minus 60 degrees. Now this is sideways tilt so it's sideways relative to the direction of motion. Okay so it's negative so it's going as it's moving forwards it's going to be tilted to the left as it's moving forward. And because I specified a machine definition I was actually, that warning was just telling me that this tool is set to spin faster than the spindle will allow, so we're okay with ignoring that for now. So there we've got it is a um, a full five axis toolpath. We'll just simulate that quickly, just so you can see the position of the tool. It's coming down and it's starting at the top and working its way down. Now we don't have to go and set up all of those um, options again. We can right click on it, duplicate then edit this operation and just reselect the face so we'll clear that out select that face this time and just change that to positive 60 degrees 
and it's going to generate the toolpath on this side. Okay, so I could carry on programming the rest of these surfaces in here using the same technique, but I'm not going to. I just want to get into showing you how to use the pattern tool. So um, effectively, what we want to do is pattern these two roughing operations and these two surfacing operations. So with the with the tool paths that we want to pattern highlighted, select pattern and switch to circular pattern, then specify the the axis that we want the um, it to pattern around. And I think there's 21. Yeah. So you can see now really quickly we've suddenly got 21 instances of that group of toolpath and although we spent quite a bit of time going through toolpathing just that one tooth we've very quickly been able to apply the same toolpath to all of those teeth. If we get into stock simulation we can very st quickly start to compare the um, surfaced toolpaths relative to the model and do some validation. So it's going to give us any warnings on um, the holder hitting the job or the shoulder of the tool rubbing and so on and so forth. So we can see down here that it's all pretty good. It's just going to go through and uh, here we go, we've started to get some errors here. So as you can see in the hit, in the simulation that the shoulder of the tool is actually rubbing against the job. So, what about machine simulation? So right click on the job, I've already specified which machine I want to use, so we'll get into machine simulation and have a look. So we've got our Haas VF3 with our TR210 um, 5-axis training set up on the table. And the reality is, is, so we're going to the adaptive clearing at this point, doing some high speed machining. We don't need to simulate the three axis stuff to be honest. We're only really interested in the five axis. So I'll stop this simulation. It's all good looking at that, but really the three axis stuff we're only we're only interested in doing stock simulation for that. So let's just have a look at the five axis flow and machine simulate that instead. all very cool. So that's full 5 axis motion machining out some some bevel gears but what about 4th axis? Well I've got another little part that we can show you that I'll switch over to now and show it um, being machined on an EC1600. So I've already programmed this these um, up before using very similar approach as before except this time I've used fourth axis and I've locked the rotation to the axis of that bevel gear. So if we want to get into simulating this and machine simulate, it's actually a really small part for the size of this machine, but it's just what I had available at the time to set up. And you can see here that sometimes the part can be way up in the air away from where you want it to be. So the trick to dealing with dealing with that is to stop that and exit the simulation. And you just have to constrain the part into place using the SolidWorks mates. Go over parallel and set that as six inches. Once you've constrained the part or mated the part into place, now we can go back into simulate and start the simulation. Now what you'll see here is that the um, Z axis on this horizontal mill here actually goes out of limit at times and you'll see that error come down here the tool will go red and you'll get out of range so it's telling you it for server extending in that axis which is a handy thing to know about your machine right so we'll speed that up so we can get get it swinging and so that's just pure fourth axis machining on this on this bevel gear here and that's it so I hope that's um, been helpful and has shown you some of the capabilities of uh, multi-axis machining in HSM Works for, uh, for gears. Thanks for taking time and um, 
hope you enjoy the rest of your day cheers bye